Over the past maybe 10 years or so, our positioning has deteriorated. Um, in 2006 or 7, we were probably one of the world's 10 best reformers. Um, but we've slipped far down. And in the overall ease of doing business, in 2016, we're number 108 out of 190 countries. That means, I mean, we were not one of the top countries uh, for business people. But we've also slipped back further this year in the rankings. From 108 to 120, we've slipped back 11, uh, 12 points. The reason is simple. It's not that nothing is happening, um, but even though we've done a number of reforms, some of our competitors are reforming faster and are taking faster measures. And because it's a ranking, if, for example, you had two steps and somebody had four steps that were undertaken in the reform program, the person is likely to jump a, a few more steps than you do. Uh, but also, the ranking for this year was from 2016 June to April 2017. And bear in mind that the government had only come into power and started work um, in January 2017. So whatever I did in four months um, was what would have gone into the ranking. But even that is not even accurate. It's what they would have done as at March that will go into the rankings because they use March and April to actually do the rankings and do the engagements to be sure everything. So it means that whatever has been done this year in terms of reforms have not been captured. But there's also um, a methodology to the reforms because in, in actually doing these rankings, the World Bank and the WEF do not necessarily come to the policy makers. They come to the business people and they ask them, okay, government said it's that, is done this reform. How does it affect you? Does it make things better for you or worse for you? And that's how the ranking is done. So if you're a government and you claim you've done reforms that do not impact on the private sector, then they are not captured in these rankings.